Hi everybody, my name is Michelle and this is my channel Sewing Bunny. Thank you for joining me in today's video, which is my September sew along. Now, if you'd seen my September sewing plans, I put all of my plans up to the vote for you guys as to which one you would like as the sew along. And just pipping it to the post is the Deer and Doe Maya Sotis dress which is the one that you guys picked. So thank you very much for all of those votes. It's just lovely. I had probably over 170 people vote, which was amazing. Um, so yes, the Myosotis is the one that came out on top. So that is what I'm doing today. Um, now again, if you have seen my September sewing plans, I was kind of in two minds with this as to what version to make because you've got the reasonably plain version here and then you've got this lovely version here with all the ruffles. Now, I love all the ruffles, but I was trying to think I'm wanting to wear this for autumn, possibly winter as well. And my plan was to be able to wear it with a cardigan and some tights and some boots. And um, a lot of you guys actually fed back to me, which was amazing to kind of say that, you know, the ruffle sleeve one's lovely. But will that be a little bit difficult if I want to wear it with a cardigan? So I totally agree with everybody, I think, on that, because I think if I'm going to wear a cardigan, if I've got the ruffles, I don't want it to then bunch up. So I am going to go for the plain sleeved version. My other thought was, do I do this plain version, but add this ruffle because it is really cute. Um, but what I'm going to do is my plan is I'm going to make up this version, which is the reasonably plain version. And then I'll see how much fabric I've got left. Um, I'll try this on as is, but without hemming. And then I'll see if I want to add this ruffle on afterwards. So I think that's probably the best way of doing it. So that is my plan. Um, I'm having a look at the back of the packet here to see what measurements they have. And so I know what size I should cut. Um, now, my measurements, um, if you don't know already, I'm a 36 bust. I'm a 30 inch waist and I'm a 40 inch hip. And I'm having a look at the measurements on here. And for um, the size 40, that is um, for a bust of 36 and a quarter. Um, I wouldn't want to go up or down on that because the lower one is 34 and a half inches and the one above is 37 and three quarter inches. So yeah, I'm looking at the size 40 for that. Um, but the waist measurement um, is 28 and a half, so obviously that's a lot smaller. And the hip is 38 and a half, which again is a lot smaller than my measurements. But um, I'm having a look slightly lower down here. They have the finished um, garment measurements, which I love when a pattern does that. Um, and for the size 40, the bust finished measurements are a 41 uh, and 3 eighths. The waist is 34 and a quarter and uh, the hip is a good old 67 and three quarters. So this pattern is a very loose style um, shirt dress. So I'll be absolutely fine with that size 40. I don't want to size down because I want there to be enough ease to actually um, give off the design of the pattern. If that kind of makes sense. I don't want to make it too fitted and then, you know, kind of for it to not look like how I know this dress to look like. Again, I hope that makes sense. So yes, I'm going to uh, cut out the size 40. Um, if you've seen any of my sew alongs before, I always trace my patterns just because for me personally, I like to trace it so that then if I need to make any adjustments at a later date or if my size changes or anything that I've always got the original um, pattern to then retrace if needed. So Sorry, if there was a bang in the background, my cat's probably knocked something off the, uh, the side. Um, so yeah, I'm going to um, find out what my cat's done. Then I'll come back and I will get tracing. So this little pickle um, decided to knock my iron off my ironing board. Thankfully, the iron was not on. Otherwise, that could have been a bit of a disaster. But uh, yes, he tried to jump up on my big ironing board and decided to knock it over, didn't ya? Okay, let's carry on with the sew along. <laughs>
Okay, so I have now cut. Oh, hello. <laughs> You're right there. Um, Bentley's just come to join. Um, I've just cut out all of my pattern pieces now. So um, I'm now going to get ready to cut the fabric. Now, the fabric which I am using is this gorgeous viscose twill. And this fabric came in the August So Haley Jane box. So I've got two and a half meters, so that's plenty, I think, for this version. And I have already washed and ironed this as well, so it's gonna be nice and easy to cut out and I don't have to worry about any shrinkage, hopefully. So yeah, I'm gonna get on and get the fabric cut. I've got all of my pattern pieces cut out now so that's lovely um, I've also done the interfacing as well uh, I've cut that out so now I am ready to start um, with the instructions I have already um, threaded my machine with the matching uh, thread which I've got Guterman thread in there and I've also um, got a standard needle which is a 70 a size 70 um, so that is all ready to go. I've got my overlocker all set up as well, just in case I need that. Um, so yeah, let's have a look and see what the first step is. I'm guessing it's going to be applying the interfacing. So uh, yes, it is apply the interfacing. Um, I think I might have cut out one extra bit of interfacing. I was only meant to cut out one interfacing for the collar. I cut out two but hey ho so I'm going to get um, ironing the interfacing onto the fabric and then I will come back So the interfacing is um, attached to those pieces so that's that bit done and then the next step is to um, sew in the darts on the back bodice and then um, the front so I've got two darts on the back I've got uh, the bust darts and the waist darts as well so I'm going to get those marked up and sewn
Okay, so I have sewn up all the darts um, and I've also pressed them as well. Um, you may have seen I was kind of like holding um, some of the bodice pieces up just because I wanted to make sure that the, um, the bust dart was kind of going to be okay. And to me, it looks absolutely perfect. Um, for anyone that wants to know, I sew my darts um, in the way where um, I make the markings and then I start sewing um, down my markings and then I reduce my stitch length um, the last kind of couple of centimetres and then I leave the ends loose so I don't back stitch and then I just tie them in a knot uh, like a double tie and then um, cut them and leave a little bit of excess. I don't know if you'll be able to see that there. Can you see I've left a little bit of excess there? So um, that's just how I personally do them. And with bus darts, I always um, use a tailor's ham as well so that you can get a good shape. So um, I don't know if that's going to show up too well, but um, that's how I sew darts. So that is that done. So the next step is um, to attach the front bodice to the back bodice at the shoulders and the sides. So I'm going to sew those and then I'm going to overlock um, the uh, raw edges of those seams so everything looks nice and tidy. So I'm going to get on to do that now. So anyone who's after a Bentley update, he's still sitting in the trolley. This is my little craft trolley. Um, and I put an old jumper in the top and uh, yeah, it's one of his favourite little spots to sleep. It's really nice because he gets to keep me company as well as being all snug and having a little nap. Yeah? He's happy, isn't he? So I've given it a little try on. You probably can't really see it too well with this top underneath. But uh, yeah, just to make sure that everything's kind of sitting all in line. So I'm happy with the um, the shoulder placement. I'm happy with uh, where the bust is. I haven't got flower boobs, which is amazing. <laughs> I did try to, when I was um, placing the pattern piece on the fabric, try and avoid any big flowers and the boob area um so yeah i'm happy with it it sits slightly above my waist um which i think is going to be okay but i might need to possibly lower it if i'm wanting to wear like a belt or something with it possibly but um i'll see how i get on with that but yeah i'm very happy with it so far so the next stage is to attach the facing pieces to uh the front um section yes yeah, so i think you just attach the um the front facings clip into the seams um and under stitch so yeah i will get on to do that now Okay, so just before I start um, understitching, just kind of wanted to show you this piece. So I have attached the facing piece onto um, the bodice front centre. And then what I've done is I've pressed the seam allowances um, up um, towards the centre. And um, also you can see there I have clipped into it as well. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I haven't trimmed any of this because the instructions haven't said to trim anything. And um, I kind of think it's probably a good idea not to trim it because it might give a bit more stability maybe to 
that front section. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew um, down this um, line here, just like edge stitch, just on um, this side, just past the line, um, just to secure it all down. So yeah, I'm going to do that. And then um, the next section then says to turn the facings to the inside of the um, bodice, um, press that. Um, and then it's top stitch it. So I'll come back to you just before I start top stitching. Okay, so I have done my edge stitching and then pressed um the facings towards the inside so i hope that you can see that there you might be able to see it on the white part of the flowers where i've um, done the edge stitching and then i've turned it over and then pressed it now the instructions then say from here to top stitch but it bothers me a little bit because there's this kind of raw edge and this fabric like really frays quite a lot and um yeah i think i need a much nicer finish on that so um i was thinking of maybe doing some overlocking but actually what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to um turn over um this um a little bit more so i'm going to turn it over so that it's got a nice clean edge so it's not this raw edge i've actually just turned it under a little bit um, because i think you top stitch at three quarters of an inch so i have got quite a bit to play with there i mean it doesn't mention that in the instructions it just says turn both facings to the inside of the dress and press so i don't know maybe they maybe they're happy with you leaving a, a kind of like a raw edge but I don't want to leave that so i'm going to um press um under like a little hem if you will then i'm going to top stitch so i will see you after that The top stitching done um, on one side for some reason my machine did something funny where the um, the thread um, kind of got a little bit kind of loose and everything I don't, I don't know if you get that sometimes but sometimes I get it where it can accidentally kind of wind itself kind of like just under um, the spool I don't quite understand why it does it to be honest but every now and again it does do that for some reason but anyway, it didn't cause any problems or anything like that. I just had to kind of reset a little bit. Um, but yes, so this is the top stitching. If you can see that there. And then that's what it looks like on the inside. So you can see it's a much cleaner finish there. So that is that section done. And then the next step, my booklets fell on the floor. Right, it's the next step is to um, get the collar started. So um, you put the two collar pieces right sides together and then you stitch around uh, the top section and then turn it right side out. So I'll do that a bit next. I have done um, that section with the collar. <laughs> Bentley's in view for everyone to see as well. Um, so yes, I have um, done the collar 
for there. So um, that looks nice and neat. So that is nice. Um, and so now the next step is to pin the collar to the bodice and then attach that. So I'm gonna do that next. collars have um, struck again so um, I don't know what it is I always get like stumped on collars and this is a really simple collar but hey so this is the first side so lovely yeah nice and straight and I don't know what's going on with that one it's like it's it's not <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to unpick it. Um, maybe I just need to stretch it out a little bit more, maybe, um, and go from there. Okay, so that's a little bit better. It's um, a little bit more straight now, so it's not as bad. So that is good. So um, yeah, you only needed to um, sew the non-interfaced part of the collar to the um, neck. So I've done that all along there. Probably that's a better angle to show you. So this is the non-interfaced part of the collar. And of course, this is the interfaced um, section. So I've done that. So in theory, if you, the, you look at the right side, you turn that over. And so then you've got your collar. And then what you would do is you'd actually uh, turn it under ooh, so that then you have a clean edge and then you top stitch all along here which is the next step. So I'm going to try and do that without making any more errors. <laughs> is in I don't think it looks too bad to be honest I don't know how well you'll be able to see it there but um, yeah I'm reasonably happy with it I mean yeah it, it's not amazing you can see on there you know it is a little bit bumpy here and there but do you know what who's gonna see stuff like that it's just gonna be me knowing it's there and I have really tried to put it in as best I can and yeah I'm happy with it so it's staying that way <laughs> So the next step is to actually start sewing in the buttonholes. And then once you've done that, you've then got to overlap the two fronts um, and then baste it actually uh, in place at the bottom. So it all stays in place. So yeah, I'm gonna do that now and then I'll check back in with you. I've sewn my buttonholes I realized I didn't actually do a practice run so thank goodness they came out okay um, and I'm actually really happy with them I think they look quite nice and neat this one I think I've done a little bit bigger than these ones well you can probably tell how much bigger they are um, but I think I'll be okay I don't think it's going to be um, too bad um, but yeah I'm happy with those so the next stage is just literally 
to um, overlap um, the two there and then just baste it so that then um, it's in the correct position. Um, I am going to obviously cut out the buttonholes and things first. It doesn't actually say in the instructions to cut out the buttonholes um, and put the buttons on. I think that's like the last step in the process, but I think I prefer to do it now um, just so that then I know it's done. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and then I will check back in with you. I have uh, sewn on the buttons to go along with that and I've basted the bottom here. I've just tried it on so you can kind of see how it looks so far and I'm very happy with it. Um, the collar's not maybe sitting as well as I thought it might but yeah I think that's just the way it's going to be. I probably should have used some maybe slightly stiffer um interfacing for that because i just use kind of quite lightweight interfacing but it is very floppy but we'll see how that goes um and then the buttons i didn't actually talk to you about the buttons um if you'd seen my gilbert top or my gilbert so long i actually used some of these little um boat buttons and i got like a pack of 20 of them because that was the smallest amount that i could get so all I've done is rather than use the boat side, I have used the plain side. So just these buttons here are just literally those boat buttons turned the wrong way around. <laughs> so I might as well use those up. <laughs> Why not? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to probably leave it there for today. I've still got the sleeves and the skirt and the pockets to do. So I will probably uh, join you tomorrow um, to get that finished off. So yeah, I will speak to you guys tomorrow. Hi everybody, welcome to day two of my uh, sew along for the uh, Deer and Doe My Sotis dress. I left you all yesterday. What are you doing? <laughs> Why don't you go sit over here? Go sit over there. That's it. Go sit over there. Pock your bum. Hi everybody, welcome to day two of my... You're such a silly thing. You know when mummy's trying to film, don't you? So welcome to day two of my uh, Dear and Doe My Sotis sew along. Um, I left you yesterday where I had just literally finished the bodice of the dress and um, I've got the sleeves and the skirt with the pockets to uh, finish off. So I have my cup of tea ready. Misty is sorted and by the window now. And um, I'm gonna get on with the next step, which is to uh, get the sleeves uh, ready. So um, I've got the sleeve pattern here. So I just need to um, attach the sleeves um, on this seam here, and then I need to hem the sleeves. So I'm gonna get on with doing that now, and then I will come back to you.
okay so that's the sleeves finished um i did finish off the seam with some overlocking on there as well and then for the hem i just um have done a double fold um on the fabric and then top stitched so um you can see that there so yeah happy with those um so let's have a look and see the next step is to actually set in the sleeves so um yeah i'm gonna do that sleeves are in and uh, yeah they went in very well I didn't have any puckers or anything so that is amazing um, I did find that you do have to ease them in quite a lot so I was kind of lining up all the notches but then there's quite a lot of excess so I did have to kind of go back and just kind of ease it in a little bit so just watch out for that um, also I did notice when I was um, overlocking I was like it doesn't look right and I realized that one of my threads had snapped in the um, in the needle so um, yeah I was overlocking with only one needle so um, I just kind of reset it and then kind of went over it again and it looks absolutely fine um, because yeah I do like to finish off my seams um, with the overlocking just because I think it creates quite a nice finish so yeah I am happy with that so let's have a look and see what the next step is. It's actually working on the skirt now. So um, the next step is to, I've got to finish the seam allowances on the pockets so I can overlock those. And then it's a case of pinning the pockets to the main body of the skirt. So I'll get on with that. pockets um, have been sewn onto the main um, piece of the skirt and they've all been overlocked um, so the next step is to um, actually attach both skirt pieces together so what it's um, saying is that you um, place your pocket piece out so you've got right side up and then you grab your other skirt piece um, find that pocket and then that one is right sides together and then what you'll do is you'll line up both the skirts and the pocket pieces and then you sew down the skirt around the pocket and then continue on down to the bottom of the skirt. Um, I am going to press it as well because this is getting a little bit crumpled and some of my overlocking is a little bit wavy so I, that needs a good press. Um, and I did actually see in the instructions, it does actually say to press at this stage. So that's really good. I love it when it tells you to uh, to press. So I'm going to get on and do that. Um, I'm going to press it on the large ironing board in the other room just because it's a bigger piece. It's a bit fiddly using that little one every now and again. 
Um, and yes, if anyone's noticed, I've put my hair up. <laughs> Basically, my hair is just getting in the way. And I noticed when I just was looking back at one of the videos, I got this weird, like, bumpy thing. You know, like when you have your hair up. I didn't bother straightening it this morning. I thought it'd be all right. But yeah, it's a bit annoying. So I thought, oh, I'll whack it up out the way just in case anyone noticed why I'd put my hair up <laughs> okay I'm gonna get pressing with this and then I'll do the fast forwarding of me doing the sewing okay <laughs> So that section is now done. So I've got both um, skirt pieces together, right side together and sewn around the pockets. Now I had did actually notice, I forgot, because um, I obviously want to try and do as clean a finish as possible. I should have actually overlocked each um, uh, skirt piece edge first before I sewed any of this. Um, it's just little things like that sometimes that I, I just like instructions. I like kind of them saying when to finish off your seams and things, especially when you do want to have a nice clean finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlock um, as much of this as I can. I can probably overlock down to this part of the pocket and then um, from uh, the pocket down to the bottom, um, the bits that obviously surround the um the pocket here will have to stay as is but um yeah i want to try and get as, as clean a finish as i can so i'm going to do that before i move on to the next step um so i'm going to yeah overlock those and then the next step um right, that's it here is um to gather the top of the skirt so um stitch two gathering lines um, and then gather until the width of the skirt matches the bottom of the bodice. So yeah, nice and straightforward for that. So I will check in with you once I've got those gathers done. So I have sewn um, my gathering stitches. So the two lines um, are stitching and then I've kind of pulled them to create these gathers. So now I'm just going to match up that with the bodice. So I just need to basically make, even though I have already started gathering, this um, skirt uh, small enough to fit that part of the top. So yeah, I'm gonna have a little play around and see if I can get it all to match up. Um, oh yes, and the overlocking I've done on there. So what I did is I just fed the um, material through the overlocker and then as soon as I got to the pocket, I kind of just turned it towards me and then ran the overlocker past it, if that kind of makes sense. And then same for the bottom start off with the hem side, run it through the overlocker. When I get to the pocket, turn it in towards me and then obviously run past it. So um, yeah, that looks like it's got quite a, quite a nice finish now. You can see kind of on there, it kind of looks like the overlocking kind of carried on the whole way around. So yeah, that's the best that I think I'm gonna get it. So yeah, I'm gonna um, now attach the skirt to the bodice.
I have finished uh, the construction of the dress. So I've attached the uh, gathered skirt to the bodice um, and it's really lovely. I love these gathers, it's so pretty. So I've tried it on because um, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that I was going to um, see whether I wanted to add the additional ruffle or not. So I've tried it on now and uh, it's not obviously hemmed quite yet, um, but I have made the decision that I'm not gonna add the additional ruffle. I think um, just kind of looking at it, I think, you know, this print is so pretty and it's quite large scale. And I think with the gathers, I think if you added an additional kind of gather at the bottom, I think it might kind of detract a little bit from it. So, um, and because of the uh, style I want to wear this um, shirt dress in, is I want to be able to wear it with tights and a cardigan. And I kind of quite like the length of it, the way it is as well. So I don't think I want to add any more length to it. So that is my plan. I am going to uh, hem the bottom of the skirt and um, then I will uh, get back to you and uh, yeah, with my final thoughts and things. she is finished <laughs> so I've done the hem I just did a double fold so I turned it up by a centimeter and then uh, folded it again with another centimeter and then top stitched it so I'm really happy with um, how it looks I think um, just as a kind of overall thing I think this pattern is really easy to follow the instructions are really really good I mean, yes, there was a couple of times when I was like, oh, I wish they'd said about finishing seams and things, but I know that that's not in every pattern. And yeah, I didn't get stuck on any element of this. Um, the collar was purely, I think, just my sewing skill. It's such an easy collar. I'm pretty sure I probably wouldn't have that trouble again if I did it. It's just, it's so straightforward, but I just didn't quite get it sitting um, exactly how I wanted it. But, you know, I'm happy. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with the fabric. I, you know, they had no problems at all. It pressed really well. Um, I did have a, a lady, I think, contact me to say that she used this fabric and she did get quite a lot of pulls. And um, I haven't experienced that um, with the fabric, but I have noticed that it does fray quite a lot. And I can imagine if you just get one of those threads that maybe frays a bit too much, then yeah, it would create quite a pull. Um, but only time will tell, I guess, with that. Um, so any adjustments that I would make next time. So um, I would lower the um, waistline. Um, just for me, I prefer things sitting at my waist because with um, dresses, I like to have both options of wearing it belted or without belt. And just for me, I think just lowering it by about an inch, I think would be absolutely perfect. So I do want to make another one because it's a lovely pattern and um, I think it would be really nice actually to be able to create the full on uh, ruffle one as well at some point. So maybe um, maybe in the spring or summer I can maybe create myself a more summery version. But I do think that this dress would be suitable for all seasons um, and yeah I wanted to make it so that it would take me through um, autumn winter but I can see myself easily wearing this um, during the spring and summer as well. So yes now that is all done I'm going to uh, obviously get changed I'm going to 
do some twirling about in the garden or what have you just so you can <laughs> see all the details a little bit better and um, I really hope that you enjoyed the sew along. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't subscribed already, it would be amazing if you could. And uh, yeah, any feedback is greatly appreciated with my sew alongs. You know, do you find that you like the format of it? You know, is it, do you like seeing everything from, you know, the process of me working out what size I want to do through tracing, through cutting the fabric, you know, or is it something you would prefer maybe just to have purely the sew along um any feedback is always greatly appreciated okay so i'm gonna do some twirling and then i will see you all in my next video thanks again for watching bye